key to making money in a situation like this is to position yourself now before the settlement. Because by the time you read about it in the Wall Street Journal, it's already too late. Community, we are the foundation. Mm -hmm. So if we vote to, we could dissolve the foundation. So the mm -hmm. power is in our hands as mm -hmm. spark holders. And I think that's very powerful for us as a community that's already an army. So now we need to take this and, you know, make this the network. And it's 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 very possible that this flare, I believe, could swallow up trillions in value out of the crypto market and traditional markets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that takes my breath away when you say that, because I know the, that the potential is not only there, but the reality looks very real to me it's very real you're it's it's exciting like i'm truly very excited now that i understand everything i see a lot of evolution happening with the community mm -hmm. as being citizens of this network and it also opens up xrp ledger any of these f assets could move on to the xrp ledger and that's that's very powerful too does this mean all the money it does mean a lot of the money. Let's put it like that. It means a lot of the money, especially the trapped dormant capital. And, you know, Flare tokenization is coming too. Um, but I, I guess the biggest takeaway, like to know how to compare Flare to XRP Ledger, think of Flare as the data provisioning network at its heart. XRP is the liquidity. Mm -hmm. And then it, you know, the data provisioning network unlocks all the value. And it will be able to bring over a lot of value and data. So it, it's a perfect complement to XRP Ledger. Proposed creating their own digital currency. And I was wondering how much of a threat is that to the dollar, uh, to, to the dollar and its dominance of uh, world markets? And if it is a threat, what can we do about it? Well, um, you know, I think, I think there's sort of a lot of different kinds of things that fall under digital currency, presumably the one, the sort of electronic forms of money China envisions are ones where um, things can be monitored, again, even more uh, granular, in an even more granular way uh, than they're being monitored currently. Um, uh, you know, the the geopolitical thing I, I sort of wonder about is always that, uh, you know, the U.S. dollar is a reserve currency of, of the world. You know, there are some things about that that are good for the U.S., some things that are um, more problematic. Um, from China's point of view, they want to get, um, they don't like the U.S. having this reserve currency because it gives us, you know, a lot of leverage over, you know, Iranian oil supply chains and all sorts of things like that. Um, they like, uh, they don't want the renminbi to become a reserve currency because then you have to open your capital account and you have to do all sorts of things that they, they really don't want to do. Um, you know, I think the euro you could think of as, you know, was in part a Chinese weapon against the dollar. It didn't. In the last decade it hasn't quite worked out that way, but that was, you know, China would have liked to see two reserve currencies like like the euro, and uh, you know, even though I'm sort of a pro crypto, pro Bitcoin maximalist person, I I do wonder whether at this point Bitcoin is also uh, should also be thought in part of as a Chinese uh, financial weapon against the U.S., where it's it is it threatens fiat money, but it especially threatens the uh, the U.S. Uh, dollar, and um, and China wants to do things to weaken it. So it's sort of China is long Bitcoin, and perhaps from a geopolitical perspective, uh, the U.S. should be a little bit uh, be asking some tougher questions about exactly how that works. But I, I, some some internal stable coin in China, that, I mean that's not that's not a real cryptocurrency. That's just a, you know that's just some sort of totalitarian measuring device. Venmo for the communist. Yes, Mr. Secretary, are you going to comment on that? That that story made the front page of the <coughs> journal this morning. Or Mr. Ambassador about China wanting to start their own Bitcoin. What do you think about that? So what, if I understand what they're doing is they're digitizing their currency. So separate from Bitcoin, it's still fiat currency, right? That is still mm -hmm. Chinese money that they are now digitizing. It has huge impacts for their surveillance capacity. They would pitch it as any fraud. You can prevent fraud from taking place. Uh, I suppose that's true. Uh, this is something I think they believe will reduce the costs of cross-border transactions as well for the Chinese. Your point about not wanting to be a reserve currency I think is right. Uh, I think they'd like it to be among a mix. They want to make sure that when, uh, when Secretary Pompeo issues the sanctions against the Iranian leadership, 
that there is a way to purchase Iranian oil that we don't have the capacity to either seize, understand, or uh, impact. And so I do think these digital currencies, separate from uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, are something you'll see more countries go to. The United States has a project where we're working on it too, but we are we we will be we will be slow off the gate. It has lots of infra- implications for us here at home. And uh, my guess is that we will not be the leader in this forefront where an authoritarian regime like China sees nearly all upside from having the capacity to issue currency or take away currency from people who act in ways that are inconsistent with uh, Xi Xi, Xi Jinping thought. No, absolutely. You think of one of the things that gives folks freedom is the ability to walk in with a hundred dollar bill or or, or some type of currency and buy something without it being tracked. But the Chinese will be able to track every single purchase that everyone makes. Now, we've freely given up that uh, that privacy in many ways with Amazon, so there's a record of everything that we purchase these days, it seems like, uh, especially during COVID. Uh, but but by taking away, uh, you know, hard currency that can uh, that can be used to purchase things, uh, it, it, it will give the Chinese Communist Party an, an enormous measure of control over the, the Chinese people, which and, and every, every time they have an opportunity for more control, they'll take it. And, and as Peter pointed out and the secretary pointed out, uh, uh, this is another big step along with facial recognition to have a a total surveillance yeah, I mean, side. They'll know every single, single thing that you I mean, you, on, on some level, it is, it, is, it is really an extraordinary sociological, political experiment with, with no real 20th century precedent. I mean, you know, there, there are ways that, you know, probably, you know, <laughs> Stalin was still worse than G and right. probably killed more people. But, uh, but just the degree of hooks that you have into people is, is just extraordinary. It's sort of like, you know, it's like sort of it, the government's, you know, in your innermost core and it's completely out it's like the god of saint augustine it's like totally outside you totally inside you yeah. knows everything about you it's uh but no, can you not, imagine not, how, how this will factor into the social omnipotent, credit score? omniscient yeah. 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 omni malevolent yeah. no, it, it makes it, the stasi look like amateurs no and the social <laughs> the social credit score when you when you tie in the currency uh, to everything yeah, what you're, else what you're spending money be, on yeah, and everything, yeah. you know uh, quite, I, quite something I, to hold. I, I, i've never heard the term omni malevolent before <laughs> Uh, Peter, following up on Mike's uh, question, which I, I think there's a consensus now that AI and quantum computing are the new high grounds, or at least mm-hmm. will be the high grounds for the future. And, and, I, and I think there's still a consensus that we have an edge uh, in both those areas, yes. although, again, it's, uh, it's a diminished edge over where it was uh, a few years back. Uh, what's your advice to the Biden administration? How do we stay ahead on quantum and AI, uh, you know, keeping in mind that we're an open society and we've got all these graduate students here and that sort of thing? Uh, what, what do we need to do to... Uh, to stay in the forefront, because my, my concern is if we fall behind, we lose the high ground, uh, we're going to be in for a rough spell. Yeah, the thing that I would say is tricky about AI is that there are you know a lot of aspects of the technology that I think we don't actually want to be pursuing too much because um, it's it's AI is what you need for a surveillance society. Right. You know, I've, I've I've had this riff where you know people often say crypto or Bitcoin is a vaguely libertarian technology. I mean, technology is politically neutral, but it can still be. <laughs> crypto is sort of, right. if crypto is kind of libertarian, then AI is kind of communist. And uh, and so even though we're ahead from the you know basic science of AI, China is willing to apply it. It's willing to turn the entire society into, you know, a face recognition surveillance state that's, uh, you know, far more intrusive, far more totalitarian than even, you know, Stalinist Russia was. I thought I'd get one that, that comes to technology. It's a narrower question mm-hmm. than where I began. So uh, our team spent a lot of time thinking about semiconductors. The standard of the Internet of Value. Global liquidity to any market, any country, any place, anywhere. Fully exchangeable to any currency, asset, or commodity. Transactions are settled in four seconds. XRP is traded 24-7, 365 days a year, everywhere in the world. Removing friction from global trade, removing barriers, removing borders. XRP transfers value anytime and all the time. From you to any place on Earth.